this is season two of The Sweater with Kathleen Dames. Over the course of our 12 week season, we will knit the pearly pullover together. Hello my friends and welcome to episode 11. <laughs> I'm gonna do it that way because I don't have 11 fingers to hold up. I am so excited, my sweater is finished. All the finishing work is done, all the stitches have been knit. Everything is bound off and woven in and all that good stuff and it's time to give my sweater a bath. And I think blocking is such a great moment. Um, hopefully you've got engaged and everything is, is knitted to the proper size so that blocking is just giving everything a chance to smooth itself out and, and be the sweater that it wants to be. So I have my blocking tools here that I'll be using for sweater. They're a little different than what I would use for lace or you know, particularly like a shawl. So um, I have, today I'm using some soak wash. I, th this is not an endorsement. Soak is great. There are plenty of other wool washers on the market, so get what works for you. I've even been known to use a gentle shampoo um, because really you just want a mild, um, a mild soap to get the oils from your hands and any dirt that may have accumulated in your yarn. You want to get that washed out. And um, I, I know a lot of people don't rinse soak. I end up doing a second rinse because I am a sensitive creature. So um, bear that in mind. If you you know if you like the scent and and all that stuff, that's great. Um, but really, you can just sort of uh, use whatever is handy and very mild. So um, because we want to treat. We want to treat our sweater nicely. Look at yay! <laughs> it looks a little small. I know that it's going to um, to relax out in the bath, and it is meant to be sort of not a long sweater. So I'm I am confident that I have knitted this to the correct gauge, and that uh, it's all going to be great. So I have my sweater and my wool wash. I have some old. Uh, some old towels. I use two usually. One I'm going to use to create a um, sort of roulade. If you are a baker, I'm going to roll my wet sweater up in one towel and use that to, and then I'm going to stomp on it. I've talked about this before, but I'm going to squeeze out the excess water that's in the wool because wool, of course, will hold on to a lot of water. And uh, so I'll squeeze the water out with one towel, and then the second towel I will lay under my sweater as it begins the blocking process. Um, I don't have a blocking board. I usually block things on my bed. Uh, I have a lovely wool blanket um, that was a special uh, special gift from for me from Maine. It's uh, really just a lovely little napping blanket and I will put a towel over that and then I'll put my sweater on there. And that way I'm sort of protecting my bed from, from the moisture that will come out of the sweater to the bottom. Uh, because not everything will evaporate, but we'll try and encourage as much evaporation as possible. So um, hopefully by squeezing the water out, by rolling it up in the towel, we'll get a lot of the moisture out and then um, that will encourage our sweater to dry even more quickly. Uh, I also like to put a fan blowing to keep everything moving and um, so hopefully I will have a dry sweater quickly. But remember, your sweater will not dry in an hour. Okay, I know, I'm sorry, it's disappointing, but um, generally, especially with wool, you gotta leave it overnight. If it's a very humid day, you may need up to 24 or 36 hours. Hopefully, that will not be the case for you. Hopefully, you know, if you wash it today, you can wear it tomorrow. And that is, uh, that's what I'm hoping for. So, the steps to blocking a sweater. Uh, first of all, finish it off. Make sure all the ends are woven in and everything and it's, and it's all secure. Um, and then you want to fill your sink up with, you know, lukewarm to slightly warm water. I think that really helps sort of activate the soap. Um, soap tends not to, or your wool wash is uh, less effective in strictly cold water. You certainly don't want to use hot water, especially if you're not using a super wash wool. Um, but, you know, gents, ever so slightly warm, just sort of room temperature, maybe body temperature, nothing extreme. I think that's the real thing to remember, is to be gentle, to not choose anything extreme. Um, fill your sink or your tub up with water, whatever you're using to wash in. 
add a little bit of soap, not too much, you know, unless it's filthy, in which case, what have you been doing? <laughs> but, you know, just a little follow the directions on your wool wash if you're using shampoo, just a, you know, a little bit more maybe than you'd use to wash your hair. Um, that's my recommendation. And then swish it around, make bubbles, that's the fun part, and then gently submerge your sweater in. Um, Sometimes when I'm really uh, feel like I'm pressed for time, I will put my sweater in while I'm filling up the sink. But because of temperature fluctuations in the taps, I tend to prefer making sure the water is the right temperature before I put the sweater in. So put your sweater in, push it down gently, make sure it's absorbing all that water. You may even need a little more water. Um, always err on the side of more water. I prefer my sweater to just barely float in its, uh, in its bath, because that means that there's plenty of water and your wool can take up quite a lot of water. So you wanna be careful with that. You don't want part of it to not get fully washed and relaxed because the bath is a relaxing thing for your sweater. All the stitches are gonna relax, they're gonna settle into their final position and this will help in smoothing out all those stitches and making them even. Now, if your tension is really off, no amount of blocking is going to <laughs> save you but it will help generally sort of even everything out and I think I've talked before about how yarn wants to achieve equilibrium so it wants to be all even so over time it will shift a little but don't um, don't rely exclusively on blocking to fix your problems okay so your sweater is in its bath leave it alone set a timer go away for half an hour, at least 15 minutes. Um, go watch a show, go bake a cake, I don't, you know, do, go do something, leave it alone. Um, come back and check on it. Make sure, you know, you can sort of tell, often you can see that some bits of wool haven't absorbed all the water. They may have a slightly lighter color or something. Um, make sure everything is, you know, saturated and relaxed and cohesive. Then drain out the water. Um, if you're you know, using your sink, just pull the stopper out. Um, and then as the water continues to drain out, squeeze the water out of your sweater. But be gentle about this. Don't, you know, it's not like uh, <laughs> if you, um, other things you may wash in the sink. Uh, but with a sweater, you really wanna be gentle. Just squeeze as much out, especially since I'm gonna do a rinse. Um, I don't, I wanna get as much out, especially because I wanna get the soap out, but, um, but I'm not gonna be mean to my sweater. Then do the same thing, fill up the sink again, try and have it be about the same temperature water and let it soak just, just for a minute or so. Swish it gently around, don't agitate it. Uh, remember felting is the product of temperature change, agitation, and um, the change in pH that soap can provide, like especially a strong soap. So we don't want felting here, right? We're just washing our sweater. And, uh, but you wanna sort of give the soap and the dirt the opportunity to leave your sweater and go down the drain. Again, empty your, your um, vessel, sink in my case, and uh, squeeze the water out. Squeeze out as much as you can, but don't, um, don't like try and squeeze out one sleeve and then squeeze out another sleeve and then squeeze out the body. You want to sort of squeeze everything together. You want it to stay a cohesive mass because wool, when it's wet, is fragile. So you want to be gentle. I don't know if I've said it enough times, but you want to be gentle. So now that you have a clean, rinsed sweater, you are going to want to do the fun part of stomping. So lay your towel out on the floor. Um, sometimes I will lay the towel, I will fold the towel in half and put the sweater on top of that. Sometimes I will lay the towel out completely, put the sweater in, fold the towel over, and make my sandwich that way. Either way, we're sort of going to make a sandwich and then we're going to roll it up. So roll it beginning from one end um, towards the other. <laughs> Make sure that any sweater bits aren't sticking out of the towel edges. Tuck everything in and um, it's time to stomp. Take off your socks, unless you really like wet socks. Bare feet is the best. Um, a tile floor or some sort of surface where the moisture is not going to harm your um, harm the surface and uh, stomp all over the towel, all over. 
stomp, stomp, stomp. You'll feel the water come out into the towel. That means it's leaving your sweater, which means it will take less time to dry. These are all good things. Um, and go back and forth maybe once or twice. So you really you sort of get a feel for it and you feel like, okay, it's, it's all good. It's out. And then you unroll and gently move your sweater to your final blocking surface. And definitely I recommend a flat horizontal surface. Don't hang it over something. Um, we're not using a, a woolly board, which is a sort of sweater shaped um, vertical structure that, uh, that is often used for like Shetland sweaters, um, which is great for blocking, especially those kinds of things. But we really were just blocking flat and smooth. Um, we're not going to stretch our sweater to any sort of final dimensions. We're just going to let it rest and dry. And so lay it out again on another towel is how I like to do it, at least at the beginning. Um, smooth everything out. You can check that your measurements are good uh, with a measuring tape or um, a yardstick. And, but you want to smooth everything out. You want to give it room. If you can sort of stretch the sleeves out, maybe further than, uh, you know, don't necessarily have them down by the sides because then it'll take those parts where the wool is touching a little longer to dry. So try and give everything a little air. Smooth it out, make sure it's all as even as it can be. And then um, I turn on a fan and let the fan blow and help evaporate some more of the water. And then you have to leave it alone. Now, I tend to leave it alone for a few hours and check on it. And then I oftentimes will take the towel that's been underneath it off because it has absorbed quite a bit of water. And I don't want it to then have that water evaporate from the towel out through the sweater before it's all fully dry. So I will tend to sort of lay it out twice. The first time on the towel and then I'll pick it up gently because it's still not fully dry, remove the towel and let it finish on my blocking surface um, and fully dry. Again, keeping the fan on it. So that it really, um, we're getting as much moisture out as possible. If you are worried about your blocking surface, you could use a third towel and just change the towel uh, for a really dry one. And that will help too, um, as long as we're getting that moisture away from the sweater. And then, and then it's done. You know, this is a pretty simple sweater, um, so we don't have to worry about buttons or, or any kind of lace stretching or anything like that. We just want it to be smooth. Um, it's up to you whether you want to block it pearl side out or knit side out. If you want to um, sort of have that anticipation and excitement of the big reveal of what it's going to look like pearl side out, block it knit side out. This is pearl side out. Um, if you just, you want to know what it's going to look like, then turn it pearl side out before you start the whole blocking process. Don't turn it inside out while it's all wet. Again, wool is very delicate when it's wet. It has amazing properties, it maintains warmth, uh, but when it's wet, but it is more delicate and the fibers are more apt to break um, or be put under stress at that point. So that's the only sort of other thing I have to say. The one other thing I want to say about blocking is I tend not to um, try and fix problems in blocking, so I don't stretch things really hard. Um, for one thing, it doesn't work if you're using a superwash wool. I'm not using superwash wool, so I could stretch and strain those fibers. Again, the fibers are delicate, and I don't really want to do that. Um, it works for some knitted objects, um, but I like to rely on the fact that I've got engaged, I've knitted to the correct dimensions, it is the size it's supposed to be. And then blocking is really just an opportunity to get everything cohesive and clean. Um, so that's my only, you know, if you've set yourself up from the beginning for a great outcome, then you can have a great outcome and you won't have to worry so much and try and, and fight with your sweater to have it be what you expect it to be in the end. And the other thing to think about when blocking is if you have to do a lot of work in blocking your sweater after you finish knitting it, you will have to do that work again every time you wash your sweater. Now, I don't think you need to wash your sweater particularly often unless you wear it right next to your skin. And um, even then, wool has a lot of sort of antibacterial properties. So if you, if you, it's not necessarily that you wash it every time. But just keep in mind that 
every time you wash your sweater, you should treat it the same way you did as in the initial blocking. So uh, that's another reason why I like to set up my project from the very beginning for success. And that way, blocking is just, it's just a matter of washing it and laying it out to dry. It's not going through any sort of extraordinary wrestling match with it every time that I wash it. So um, that is everything for today. Next week, we'll have a finished sweater. It will be dry, it will be lovely, and I will wear it and I will be happy. And, uh, and you will be happy with yours too. I hope you are enjoying knitting your sweater, finishing your sweater, and now blocking your sweater. If you have been watching sort of as these episodes have been released and you're not at the same point where I am, please don't worry. That's, it's not a race, it's not a competition, it's fun. So I hope you're having a lot of fun with your sweater. And one more thing, I just wanted to mention that I am wearing the Strawberry Picking Shrug, which is this great little lace shrug. If you have never knit lace that's worked on both sides, this is a great first project for that. It's a, it's very delicate lace because there are yarn overs on both sides. It's just, the motifs are very open. It's a lot of fun to work. It's just a rectangle. It's not hard. Uh, one skein of yarn, one needle, and, um, and just two tiny seams. They're like an inch long at either end to turn this rectangle into a shrug. So that will be coming out very soon. Uh, and it's, it was originally published in Jane Austen Knits 2014. I will be publishing it soon in my own Ravelry shop. So stay tuned. Thanks. And uh, thank you so much for being here. And until next time, happy knitting. Mwah! Bye. This is season two of The Sweater with Kathleen Dames. Over the course of our 12 week season, we will knit the pearly pullover together. Many thanks to Reen at Happy Fuzzy Yarns, Corinna at Picnic Knits, Tara Swiger and my fellow Starship captains, and you for being a part of The Sweater with Kathleen Dames. Don't forget to visit KathleenDames.com slash the sweater to sign up for the newsletter before July 22nd to receive your free copy of the Pearly Pullover in your welcome email. Is it after July 22nd? Just not a joiner? Purchase your copy of the Pearly Pullover from my Ravelry shop anytime. Be sure to share your progress on social media with the hashtags Pearly Pullover and KD Sweater. Questions? Comments? Visit the Kathleen Dames Design for Ravelry Forum today. Thanks so much for joining me and happy knitting. <laughs>